Well, good evening. Welcome back to church. We're glad to have you here. We're going to start off this evening service by standing and singing hymn number 175. Hymn number 175, Man of Sorrows, What a Name. Number 175. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came, proven sinners to reclaim. Alleluia, what a Savior, bearing shame and scoffing grew. In my place condemned he stood, sealed my pardon with his blood. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Guilty, vile, and helpless we, spotless Lamb of God was he. Atonement, can it be? Hallelujah, what a Savior. Lifted up was he to die. It is finished, was his cry. Now in heaven, exalted high. Hallelujah, what a Savior. When he comes, our glorious King, all his ransom home to bring. Then our new this song will sing. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Brother Matt Goodmiller, would you open us in prayer, please? Amen. <clears throat> All right, turn to hymn number 142. Hymn number 142, there is a fountain filled with blood. <clears throat> there is a fountain filled <coughs> Jules veins and sinners plunge beneath that flood Lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. Lose all their guilty stains. And the sinners <coughs> plunge beneath that flood. Lose all their guilty stains. Dying thief, rejoice to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, the violence he wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. And there may I, the vile as he, wash all my sins away. Dear dying lamb, thy precious blood shall never lose its power. Till all the ransom church of God be saved to sin no more. Be saved to sin no more, be saved to sin no more, till all the ransom church. 
church of God be saved to sin no more. Ere since by faith I saw the stream, thy flowing wounds supply, redeeming love has been my theme, and shall be till I die, and shall be till I die, and shall be till I die. Redeeming love has been my theme, and shall be till I die. All right, our last hymn this evening we number 411. Go ahead and stand. Number 411, Tis So Sweet <clears throat> to Trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know that saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, Oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust him, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that he is with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Man, you can be seated. We have a special service tonight. I'm excited. We're going to do... Um, a few of the specials that our kids did at church camp. And the very first song we're going to sing is one that we learned. Now, the first time we ever heard this was Monday night. But we sang it every service. So I need all my campers and even my sponsors that were there all week to come on up here. Come on. We're going to start out by singing the camp theme song, I Want to Live My, I Want My Life to Count for Jesus. And uh, I'd worked out the chords, and I think they know it good enough. I will help. And uh, so our kids also had the opportunity to sign up for specials. And so we have a couple of duets and a solo. Now, Allie is in three of them. Um, but we also have a girls' quartet that did a song that our group has practiced for uh, on and off for a couple of years, but we've never presented it. And so um, we will break up. 
the evening with some preacher boys and some specials. If you'll be patient and bear with us, it'll go, um, I think you'll get a blessing. I was really blessed to see our kids using their talents for the Lord. And uh, I know some of you do not have it memorized, so y'all go ahead and take those and pass those out if you don't mind. But I did have three announcements I was told to make before we get things rolling. Um, on July 23rd at 2 p.m., there is a wedding shower for Lance and Elizabeth. I believe that's this coming Saturday. And they are registered at Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond, or Go to the Knot. That was in the bulletin, but Miss Pat wasn't sure people knew that. And most of y'all know Miss Elizabeth. We're real excited. We're getting her married off to Lance. And uh, um, so I'm a little bummed out because that means our kids tutor. If my kids' educational level declines, it's all because of this wedding, you know. <laughs> July 30th at 2 p.m. is a wedding shower for Brady and McKenna. And they are registered at Amazon. And so I wanted to, to uh, announce that as well. And then there is a sign-up on the bulletin board for the ladies' retreat at Calvary. If any of you ladies uh, have not looked into that, if you're there, I know the speakers will be good. And so that is on the bulletin. So now our, our young people here are going to sing, I Want My Life to Count for Jesus. And when we're done, all of you besides Allie and Kaylee can go on down, okay? Y'all will do a duet after that. Here we go. This was kind of the theme of the camp. I want my life to count for Jesus. All want their lives to count for something, to leave their mark when life is through. But vain pursuits will count to nothing. Time will this point, I'm going to have Allie and Kaylee sing, Lord, here's my basket. Now go ahead and take a...
Lord, here's my basket. Do you all have the music for that, girls? I do. <laughs> now, you'll be fine. And uh, I'm grateful they allow the kids to uh, enter and sing. It gives them an opportunity to kind of practice using their gifts for the Lord. Amen. And so the point is really not winning, uh, even though they do give out ribbons for the duets and things like that. But the point is that they can serve the Lord. And this song actually actually sings about giving what you have to the Lord. So the girls will be doing, Lord, here's my basket. Multitude had gathered on a hill near Galilee to hear the words of Jesus and his miracles to see. But as the day wore on, his disciples came to say, There's not enough to feed them, Lord, should we send them away? And from a little old boy whose basket of five barley loves of bread, and with two fish, five thousand hungry people would be fed. Lord, here's my basket. It's not much, I know. But take it and use it. Please don't refuse it. Maybe it will grow. Although I could keep it, I'll give it to you. So, Lord, here's my basket. You don't have to ask. It's the least I can do. Now in each and every life, there's a basket full of goods. Although it may not be used exactly as it should. So many throw it all away or keep it for themselves. While others, they never use it, they just place it on a shelf. Lord, I know that what you've done for me, my basket can't repay. But maybe with it you could feed some hungry soul along the way. Lord, here's my basket. It's not much, I know. But take it and use it. Please don't refuse it. Maybe it will grow. Although I could keep it, I'll give it to you. So, Lord, here's my basket. You don't have to ask. It's the least I can do. So, Lord, here's my basket. You don't have to ask. It's the least I can do. Amen. Now, one of my favorite parts of camp, and I'm very grateful. I know some years ago, I don't know how old Levi Patrick was, but he said he felt called to preach. And uh, I'm going to try to hold him to that, amen. amen. But uh, if Levi, Patrick, if you'd come down, you're going to be on deck. And Jacob Knight, Jacob brought a message this morning. He had practiced it at the lake. You, all, you young men, just make your way down. Bring your Bibles. At camp, they were each given a five-minute time slot. You don't have to use all five up, but they um, used to just kill your mic at the five-minute mark. And uh, so, so they are going to share. They're very short messages, but they're based right out of the Word of God. So get your Bibles out, and we'll begin with Jacob Knight. Hello, my name is...
My name is Jacob Knight, and my topic today will be love your enemies. Please turn to Luke chapter 6, verse 27 through 28. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. So if someone mistreats you, don't fight back. Go pray for them to get saved. Please turn to Galatians chapter 5, 13 through 14. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love thy neighbor as thyself. That's probably one of the most important laws you ever hear. You don't have to be slaves to help someone. It says you can serve someone through love. Please go back to Luke. 6, verse 35. But love ye your neighbors, and do good, and lend hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful, to the evil. Give money to the poor. Don't expect he will give you anything in return. And if you be patient, and you will receive the best gift of your life. It's called salvation from the devil. And the only thing you have to do is believe that Jesus Christ died for you. And when you get saved, spread the word so that everyone else has the opportunity that you got. So, for example, on Love Your Aims, please turn, and if you have a bully at your school, not many people usually like bullies because they usually pick on people. But God does. He loves each and every one of us the same amount. And he loved us so much, he sent his own son to die on the cross. And he want, and once we, sh and once we get saved, you shouldn't have anything else to fear. You don't have to fear dying because you're saved. Amen. For another example, John 3.16 for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You will have everlasting life with the King of kings, the one and only true God, the God that led the Israelites out of Egypt, the God who has power over death. Have you ever heard of any other God who has power over death? No, because there is no other God. At least in this world we live in today, we know our God is still in control. Amen. Good. Thank you, Thank you. All right, now Levi Patrick will come. Hello, my name is Levi Patrick Skaggs. The title of my sermon is Shaking Off Vipers. Acts 28, chapter 1, verse 6. And when they were escaped, they knew that the island was called Mytilla. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one. Because of the present rain, and because of the cold, and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hanging on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And when he shook, and he shook the beast off into the fire and felt no harm, how be it? They looked, and when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while, and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. In today's times, vipers can be hiding in many different places, like smartphones, social media, and the internet. Now, when we use such things, it is, be, it is best to be under a god-given authority. 
like in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20 says, My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Colossians chapter 3, verse 20. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 16. This day the Lord thy God hath commanded thee to, thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thine heart with, and with all thine soul. Deuteronomy 26.16 tells us to wholeheartedly obey God's word. Following these instructions will keep us from being bitten by a dangerous viper. There will come a time when we will have to build our own walls to protect ourselves. The Bible tells us that when we trust in the Lord, that he will protect us. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understandings. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. There will come a time when we will fail to obey God's word, but thank God we have a right a eh, thank God we have a way back to a right relationship with the Lord. In First John chapter one, verse nine, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. My message has primarily been to the saved, but to those of you who want to know how to be saved, turn with me to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Thank you. Amen. Amen. This time, I'm Anne, Allie, and Victoria. They're going to be doing a solo and then a duet together. And my girls are amazing. The week before camp, they began to work on songs that I had never heard before, really. And so, and our week was a little bit busy to say the least. And so, um, the accompanying part of their specials may be a little rough because that's the part I'm doing. But uh, they did very well at camp, and they'll be doing. Uh, I'll, I'll have Allie sing first, and then Tori will come on up and help her. And this will be Mike 11. Okay. He spoke as if he knew me woman told the crowd he told me things nobody knew but he never put me down we stood talking by the well and i was so ashamed then he asked me for some water now i just have to say he could never ask too much of me I'm forever changed and finally free. Anywhere he sends me, I will go there willingly. Cause he could never ask too much of me. He's 
just a simple carpenter, I heard somebody say. But all I know is I was blind till he touched my eyes that day. And now I'm seeing all the things I've never seen before. And I just want to tell you, now I'm following the Lord. He could never ask too much of me. I'm forever changed and finally free. Anywhere he sends me, I will go there willingly. Cause he could never ask too much of me. So great a salvation for grace that covers me for Bethlehem Gethsemane most of all for Calvary he can keep going he can never ask too much of me I'm forever changed and finally free anywhere he sends me I will go there willingly he could never ask too much of me. He could never ask too much of me. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh... I'm learning them, okay? I don't know them all just yet. Sarah laughed in her heart at God's promise. Isaac proved nothing is impossible. Martha wept by the tomb of Lazarus. Oh, but death lost when life spoke a miracle in God's perfect time he's never been late his plan for your life is worth the wait in God's perfect time you can always trust when the moment is right the answer will come in God's perfect time Sometimes between your prayers and God's answers, faith can be so hard to hold on to. And with every passing day, doubt whispers, oh, but don't give up, because God is going to move. In God's perfect time, He's never been late. His plan for your life is worth the wait. In God's perfect time, you can always trust. When the moment is right, the answer will come. In God's perfect time. So when you haven't heard His voice, and you don't understand you're still in God's loving hand in God's perfect time he's never been late his plan for your life is worth the wait in God's perfect time you can always trust when the moment is right the answer will come in God's perfect time. In God's perfect time. Amen. Amen. Samuel. So I was really proud that uh, our boys participated. Just uh, <clears throat> kind of a big picture prayer request. 
the camp directors uh, mentioned to me that this year uh, things have kind of changed. They said just the atmosphere in general. Used to at camp, there'd be um, 10, 15, sometimes 20 preacher boys from, like for example, there was seven or eight different churches represented amongst the you know, 180, 200 kids that were there. And the only four preacher boys were our boys. Um, and th there was a lot of boys that used to do that, and they just, I guess, feel like they're not, it's not cool or whatever. Um, so I was very blessed that our boys were willing to get up. And uh, so, Sammy, you come and share with us. Good evening. My name is Samuel Turner, and my message tonight is called we are soldiers, and uh, I'll be reading out of 2 Timothy 2. So if you would please put turn there. That's 2 Timothy 2. I'll be reading verses 1 through 4. Okay. 2 Timothy 2. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Okay, so this was Paul writing to Timothy. And uh, this was probably the last letter Paul wrote in uh, chapter 4. Next page over, it says, um, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my cause. I have kept the faith. So, um, this was the last letter he wrote. So, you'd probably want it to be a pretty good letter, right? Yes. So, Paul gave Timothy four orders. So, the first order, there's a new order in every verse. So, in the first verse... Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So, number one, be strong. That's not push-ups and pull-ups and sit-ups. It's not physically, but spiritually. So, in the second verse, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. So, so the second command is to pass it on. So, uh, in Matthew 28, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So, it means sort of to preach the gospel, and then to teach others to preach the gospel. That's right. That's right. And then, this third verse, it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So, that's the verse it says to, that we are soldiers. And so the third command is to endure hardship or hardness. Grandpa likes to say, you're either coming out of hardship in the middle of it or going into a hardship or a storm. So things are going to get hard sooner or later, so keep on keeping on. Second, in the fourth verse, it says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Remember who to focus on. That's the fourth command. So don't get entangled with the world around. Also, notice Paul is not our commander. He's not the leader. God is. He's the one who sent us to be soldiers. So in closing, let's review our four orders. Number one, be strong. Number two, pass it on. Number three, endure hardship. Number four, remember who to focus on. That's God. Thank you. All right, at this point, uh, Eli, if you'll go ahead and come on up and uh, just take a seat. Eli will be bringing us the main message. He's got more than 10 minutes because he rushed and he ended with zero time on the clock. They gave him 10 minutes and he used every single second. <laughs> Amen. And I mean, he brought it home right on triple zero, just like a buzzer beater, Brother Jim. He, 
he brought it in. But at this point, our four we had four senior girls sing a quartet, and it was called Living Water. It's a song, like I said, they've been working on. So you girls, come on up and sing before Eli preaches here. Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. John 7, 37 and 38. Living waters. There's a river. 
Good evening, everyone. Amen. You have to excuse me. Uh, I've been feeling a little bit under the weather today, so my voice may not be exactly what it was Thursday <laughs> at camp. Uh, but as, camp, as Brother Clay said, I have to agree with him. It was a good week of camp. We got to hear some good preaching from Brother Adam Langston and Brother Ed Loney, and uh, God really convicted me in some of his messages. <coughs> Anyway, let's jump into the message tonight. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I'm not going to make you stand, but please turn to Romans chapter 10. <clears throat> I'd like to start tonight with asking a question, and that is, what has God called us to do after we are saved? It's a question that we all face with after we get saved, and... Uh, Really, it's the most important thing that I'm going to talk about tonight that we should all do. Romans chapter 10, verses, verse 11, starting with, says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So my question today, another qu second question is, do you have beautiful feet today? <laughs> if I can title my message today, it would be beautiful feet. And you may not understand that yet, but uh, by the end of my message, you will. <clears throat> so God calls us all to do different things after we become Christians. Uh, we should uh, use our own special gifts that he's given us and uh, use them in order to glorify him. He calls some to preach, some to uh, teach Sunday school, some to sing, some to plant churches, some to be missionaries. But God has a plan for every one of our lives. He has given each one of us different gifts, and uh, actually this in Sunday school this morning, that's what we were learning about, was the different gifts that we've been given. So that's God working through, you can see God working through there. Uh, it says in 1 Corinthians, I'm just going to read it right quick, chapter 12, verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So we, are, we all have different gifts, we all have different special purposes that God's given us, but we're all one body, we're all... Right the bride of Christ, the church. <clears throat> so God may not have called us all to full-time ministry, but he, de he has called all of us to be witnesses for him. We know that for sure. And to tell everyone that we meet each day about Christ. Uh, now this is the problem that we're facing today, though. Christians are not standing up and sharing the goodness of, of the gospel. They're not sharing their faith. Uh, the testimony of Ron Wyatt, I don't know if you, if you all have ever heard of him, but uh, he got saved. his testimony in brief is he got saved, and then uh, he said, my, he went to his pastor and said, what do I do now? And his pastor said, go tell, go tell someone about it. Go tell someone that you, what happened to you in your, and what Jesus did for you in your life. And so that's what he did. He just went, got on his bicycle, started riding around to colleges and uh, witnessing to people. And he takes videos of it. You can see them on YouTube. Just search wrong Wyatt videos and uh, learn how to witness to someone. <clears throat> now, I understand that it's hard to get up in front of people. It's hard to preach, obviously, uh, at, at camp. I know there wasn't very many preacher boys, but I think that's because a lot of people don't feel like they're public speakers. I don't feel like I'm a public speaker, but I feel like if God tells you to do something, then he'll give you the power to do it. <clears throat> The Bible has something to say about that. I just want to read a few verses here. Uh, in verse number 11 says, for, of our main text in Romans 10, says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. We shouldn't be ashamed of the faith. We shouldn't be ashamed of the gospel. Uh, 2 Timothy 1, 6 and 7. You don't have to turn there, but I'm going to read it. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that God, that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. 
So God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. We shouldn't be afraid to tell people about him. Uh, Exodus 4, 10 through 12, kind of little like a little Bible study here. Uh, it's an example of, of this. Uh, Moses was saying that he was slow to speech. He was saying, Look, God, I can't do these things. I'm not eloquent. I can't speak in front of people. And this is what God has to say. Uh, verse 10, chapter 4. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech, and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. So God's going to be with us. And we have a promise from him that would give us the strength to do his will. And Romans 1.16 is another one. It says in Romans 1, 6, verse 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. This is Paul speaking. For it is the power of God unto salvation, and to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. So God's going to give us the strength to do what we need to do. Now, Christ was our perfect example of what evangelists should look like today. He was teaching the elders in the temple when he was only 12 years old. You can believe it. And I just want to share a few verses that will show what that example looks like. And Jesus said uh, to his parents whenever they found him in the temple, he said, uh, should I not be uh, about my father's business? I mean, like, he expected, they should have expected him to be there. <laughs> so first Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, 5. For we preach not to our, of ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. So it's not us when we speak, when we preach the word, when we give the gospel to someone. It's not us speaking. It should be God speaking through us. Amen. And next is Isaiah 6, verse 8. It says, uh, And also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? God's asking us that same question today. And then said I, Jeremiah, here am I, send me. That should be the response of every Christian today. We should say, be willing to say, here am I, Lord, send me. I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. But now here's the kicker. At verse 16, back in our, our text, uh, Romans 10, Verse 16 says, But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Esaias saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? You've got to have a good report to be effective at sharing the gospel. As Christians, God has called us to live up to certain standards. And yes, we will still stumble and fall, but just as long as we don't fall and not get back up. For example, if you saw your preacher walk out of a bar, uh, are you going to go back to that church? <laughs> Well, he may have had a good excuse this time, so you might let it slide. But if you see his car there the next, get, next day again and the next day, pretty soon the testimony of your pastor is not going to be very good anymore. Right. He's not going to have a good report. That's right. But the devil, he's going to try and do everything he can to ruin your testimony. And if you haven't fallen yet, he's going to try and convince you uh, that, that the man that you were before you got saved was too awful now to proclaim the gospel. He'll say stuff like, you're too far gone, or something like, something like that. And, but that's just a lie that the devil's trying to tell you. He's going to do everything he can to make you doubt your ability to witness. So here's an example, the, uh, a metaphor. Uh, the, the devil is having a garage sale, let's just pretend. Uh, and he's got all his tools out, all the tools that he uses to tempt the people of the world. And he's got all these demons coming up, and in, they're trying to buy stuff from him. And there's these two over in a corner, and they look very well used. And one of them comes up to the devil and says, how much do you want for those two? And he goes, oh, I'll never sell those. <laughs> he says, those are the, the most powerful tools I have. He said, the most used tools. He said, 
but he says, uh, uh, when all else fails, those two, tool, those two tools will always work, and they were doubt and discontentment. The devil is going to do everything he can to make you doubt your ability, to doubt everything that God's told you is true. But we as Christians don't have to fall for that thing, or for, for those things. We don't have to fall for doubt. We don't have to fall for discontentment. But we as Christians don't have to. And now I want to end with an encouragement. <coughs> so sharing the gospel is one of the most rewarding things that we can do as Christians. Yes, right. The Bible says to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven in Matthew 6, 19. And one day Jesus will reward us according to his riches and glory. Now, going back to my original question, what has God called us to do after we're saved? Two things. The first one is up on the wall at Heartland Baptist Bible College. Uh, it's up on the back of the sanctuary. It says, preaching the word, reaching the world. And that's what we're all called to do as Christians. So we're, tra we're called to go and tell people about Christ. And the second thing is uh, to praise and glorify Him. So, Matthew 9.37 it's my last text for tonight. <coughs> it's Jesus talking to his disciples. And I, in my opinion, he's talking to every Christian. He says, The harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. So the harvest is open. There's not very many laborers, not very many people telling people about the gospel. That's the only way we can grow as the, as the body. That's the only way that, I mean, we're never going to win till the very end, but that's the way that the, the church can grow. And a prayer that we should all make as Christians, I just want to add this in, uh, a prayer that we should all make is, uh, it, I just took this out of a song uh, about, called Jesus, Friend of Sinners. And I really like this, but it's something that we should pray often as Christians, in my opinion. Jesus, Friend of Sinners, Turn our eyes to the world at the end of our pointing fingers. Let our hearts be led by mercy, and let us speak with open hearts and open doors. Jesus, friend of sinners, break our hearts for what breaks yours. Lord, give us a burden for those that are lost, those that you love. And I just want to say to everyone, uh, we should all be called, we're all called to do some form of ministry. So obey God's command and tell someone about Jesus today. That's Amen. all I have. Thank you. Amen. And uh, I don't have a whole lot to add to that. I hope you have beautiful feet. Amen. I hope you shared Jesus with someone. Uh, you may be here tonight and not know Jesus. And so here at Lindsay Chapel, we like to have a time of invitation I'm going to go ahead and ask Megan to make her way to the piano. But as she comes, I want to point out something that stuck out to me at camp. <clears throat> Brother Ed Loney was preaching, and he referenced 1 Samuel 17. The Bible talks about, uh, and we covered this not too long ago, about David and Goliath. <clears throat> and when David stood before Saul, Saul said something that if you stop and think about it, it really doesn't make sense. He told David, you can't go fight. He said, because you're a youth. And he said, Goliath has been a man of war since his youth. And Brother Loney said, isn't it amazing how we expect that young people can serve the devil and do wrong things, but then we tell them, hey, you can't serve the Lord. You can't fight for the Lord. You're a youth. Uh, now, the world out there, they've been, they've been serving the devil since they were youth, but you can't serve the Lord when you're a youth. And he made that point, and I thought, you know, it's very fitting uh, to think that, I know, I know parents who, who will say, well, I'm not sure my kid's responsible enough to make a decision uh, about purity or about uh, serving the Lord, but they're, they're mature enough to fornicate. You know, they're mature enough to make the wrong decisions, but they're not mature enough to serve the Lord. And so our expectations of our young people, I think the world has dumbed us down to think that our young people can't serve the Lord. And I'm so grateful for our young people that have, have gotten up and, and shared. And a couple of our, uh, there's probably half a dozen of our camp 
kids that aren't here for different reasons. I know we had Chloe and Carson with us and different ones, but um, <clears throat> but we did have uh, a couple that made professions of faith. And, you know, I never assume on a Sunday night that everybody in the building knows Jesus. But you've heard the gospel shared tonight, uh, all the way from Jake and Levi Patrick and uh, Samuel and Eli. Uh, you've heard the gospel shared. Jesus died for you. It would be a shame to send people around the world to tell folks about a Lord and Savior that you may not personally be acquainted with. And so I'm going to have you stand, and I didn't ask you, but can you play I Have Decided to Follow Jesus? I think it's page 305. About every night at camp, we sang, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Uh, now, if you need to come tonight, if God has dealt with your heart, some of you are saved, and you have not been fulfilling your personal ministry. And maybe God's prompted you in that area. But if God's called you to make a decision tonight, then I want to encourage you before we're dismissed, you do that. Pastor's right here. He'll meet you. If you need to talk to somebody about being saved, you come on down and we can direct you to people who can share Jesus with you, how to know him as Lord and Savior. But as Megan plays, <clears throat> this time of invitation is for you. And uh, you don't need a hymn book. But uh, once she plays through this, I want us to sing from our heart. We've decided to follow Jesus. That's my prayer. Our young people are coming. It'd be a shame if our young people is the only one serving the Lord. Amen. And so I want to challenge you. If God's prompted you, then to do something about it. If you'll set us up again, Megan, we're going to sing that through. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. She's going to play one more verse. If you need to come, now's the time. We're not going to go long. Boy, I'm sure grateful I got to be here and hear those young people sing. Amen. Hear those young people preach. It's encouraging. Amen. Well, it's been good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. And you know what? I had some people say that they were just coming to see if I could actually keep from preaching when the, when the kids were done. Yeah, so Justin, you owe me that 20 bucks, buddy. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but if it's all right, we're going to be dismissed. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Jimmy Clark. Jimmy, would you dismiss us in prayer, please?